Hi folks, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com and in today's video, I wanna talk about the five common mistakes that I see people make with pond aeration systems. Uh, we're gonna go through these relatively quickly. Uh, if you have questions that come up from this, this discussion, please do put them down below. We can talk about it there in more depth and detail. But uh, I just want to make you aware of where I'm seeing some of these mistakes occur. Some of it involves DIY efforts, but some of them can involve anybody, whether you get professional help or you're doing something on your own, the potential for errors is still there. And so I think it's worth talking about. Number one thing, this has improved, I think, over recent years because so many people have talked about it. A lot more people are aware of it now than they used to be, but it's still something that I see people having an issue with, and that is the startup process is too fast for some people. Remember that when you put a subsurface aerator in a pond, you're going to stir up the water. You're going to mix it from bottom to top. It's going to mix. And if you have very loose sediment down there, a lot of muck and old decayed stuff, you're going to stir that bottom muck up. And there will be gases that come out of that. There will be some uh, effects on oxygen because of that release. And so you definitely want to introduce an aerator like this slowly in older ponds with fish and I would say especially during heat or hot weather. Uh, it's better to go slow. 20 minutes the first day is recommended by many, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Then you double the runtime each day. It takes about a week to get up to full-time 24-7 operation, but it is definitely something to keep in mind. If the conditions are right, you've got to go slow. And it's when in doubt, go slow. You're always better off. Number two, we want to talk about making adjustments to a system depending on conditions that you're facing. Folks, I think, make the mistake that they can put an aerator in and once it's up and running good, they just let it go and nothing else needs to be done. And this involves properly fitted aerators uh, just as much as anything else. So the point being that in some cases, if you have a shallow pond, very hot conditions, maybe you, you're working down south, and you have fish in that pond, there is a chance, there is a risk that you could heat up the pond excessively to the point where you lose fish because of the temperature increase, not oxygen. And so in certain cases, you may want to adjust how you run an aerator based on conditions. What do I mean? Well, you can run the aerator only at night, maybe 12 hours through the overnight and avoid mixing the water during the day. I talked a lot about this year, a lot about this issue this year because I've seen more and more people experience it and I think making adjustments appropriately can help you minimize losses or risk and you're just trying to get the fish through a critical period. Uh, they need oxygen and typically low oxygen would occur during the nighttime hours but if you can avoid heating the pond up during the day through that mixing you may be able to get through with very good results. Another example might be in wintertime. You don't want to aerate an entire pond body in the wintertime. Typically, you're just going to run, let's say if you have multiple diffusers, you're going to one run diffuser and open a spot of ice up just to keep air and gas exchange going, but you don't have to open up everything. And I generally wouldn't run all the diffusers, or if I have a single diffuser, I might move that diffuser to a more off-center shallow position, again, just for ice management, but not to mix the whole pond. That's, to me, the best way to aerate in the winter months. Number three, I want to talk a little bit about maintenance. There's only a few points of maintenance with these systems. The most common thing that you're going to deal with is the air filter, and you should check that filter, let's say, three months out from startup and see how it's holding up, see how it's looking. I think most people can get about a year out of these filters before they need to change them, but I've seen some come back in that were so filthy you're wondering how the pump ever got air. And uh, the necessity of changing these will depend on the environment that is around the pump, how dusty and dirty it may be, but I would suggest three months out, check it, six months out, check it, get a feel for how long it's taking to see a little bit of buildup on this filter and then change it out at least yearly uh, to make sure because the quality of the air output is dependent on the quality of the air intake and you want to make sure that that's doing its job but not get, getting restricted. The other thing involving cleaning is 
it's recommended by pretty much every manufacturer that I know of that the diffuser should be pulled out of the water and checked and ideally the the membrane where the bubbles come out should be cleaned off thoroughly you can use warm soapy water uh, vinegar solution something to uh, to try to break up some of the buildup and biofilm that can build up on these things see how it looks check it the first year and see how it's holding up and if you need to clean it clean it if you felt feel like you need to clean it yearly do that if you feel like it's pretty good just in the in the first year of running and you're not getting a lot of buildup you could go longer probably than yearly but definitely keep an eye on that because part of the quality of the aeration you're going to get out of this system is dependent on the fine bubble diffusion that you're getting out of this component and so the cleaner it's maintained the better and then the final thing is when you're anywhere from two years on out more common would be be three to five let's say the rubber seals and gaskets on the piston on these rocking piston compressors will start to wear down and they'll need to be changed and you will often see either the bubbling stop the pump will run but the bubbling will be reduced or stop altogether if you have multiple diffusers one may be running the other one will stop altogether and that's an indication especially in this time frame that i'm talking about for uh, compression loss to start to occur and when you see that it's time to shut the system down and get a rebuild kit change those out and you'll be back up and running easily 20 30 minutes you're good to go uh, don't let the pump just run because if the rubber seal wears down too much and you start to get metal on metal you're going to ruin that pump and you don't want to do that the the other thing that I want to mention real briefly is that these pumps need to be kept as cool as possible. They get very hot. This has more to do with DIY efforts when somebody is building a protective cabinet for the pump. I have had people build cabinets. I've told them, please make sure it's well ventilated, but the pump would run, heat up, and it would start melting parts off the pump. And that's an indication that you're not getting good ventilation. So of course they need to be kept dry if you're doing your own cover or cabinet. Keep them dry, give ample space around the pump, and then put a intake vent on one end of the cabinet and an exhaust fan on the other. Four inch fan is what is typically in the factory cabinets that we have, but that is pulling the heat out of the cabinet to prevent buildup there. And that will help you avoid any kind of meltdowns and issues. And I think the cooler you can keep this type of pump, the longer life you're gonna get out of it. So it's a good idea to ventilate well. Number four, I wanna talk about mist sizing. And this can happen with both a professional dealer setting up a system or somebody just buying one off the shelf and trying to fit something to a pond. First of all, anybody who's helping you uh, fit an aerator to a pond is de fully dependent on the information that you give them. We can always cross check surface area size. That's not a problem, but we can't check depth. So don't guess on the depths. Make sure that you have a good idea of the depth of the pond that you've got and provide that information to the pro because depth is a huge factor in how these systems cover a pond area. The, the more depth you have, the more area or space in the pond you can affect. But as you lose depth, you lose coverage and you have to compensate for that by adding more diffusers to the system. It sounds kind of reverse of what it should be, I think, in, in many people's brains, but that's how it works. And so depth is a critical thing to know. And when we run these calculations, we're trying to estimate uh, full pond volume and how much aeration we need to turn that volume over. Without that accurate information, the system can't be fit properly or it will be misfit. The second thing that I see for people that are just kind of buying stuff off the shelf, and I see this from folks that are just getting these, these cheap imported systems off the internet, um, and not a problem, you can spend your money anywhere you want, but at least make sure you get a system that's gonna work for what you want to do with it. I, I saw a guy, post that he was using a three-quarter horsepower rocking piston pump with a single diffuser. I suspect it was so expensive to run that he only ran it an hour a night. That's not doing anything for what he is wanting to do to protect fish. The oxygen retention is so short in warm weather that an hour a night will do nothing, okay? And he would have been far better off getting a quarter horsepower pump to power that single diffuser. It costs about 15 bucks a month to run full time and it's way more suited to a single diffuser system. You want to maintain something like 1.5 to 2.5 CFMs out of a diffuser or each diffuser in a system. 
if you can do it and the quarter horse fits that perfectly whereas a three quarter horse is just too much i've also had folks buy pumps alone from us and i didn't do my due diligence with them to find out how they were using them but they would hook up a, a one horsepower rotary vane to a single diffuser and within two weeks he blew out the seals on the pump it is not the way to fit a system so more is not better getting the right ratio of horsepower and cfms to the number of diffuser outlets that you have is really the way to go and you're going to get your most efficiency who wants to spend a bunch more money per month running one of these large pumps and when it's overkill and not giving them any real extra benefit other than expense so make sure that you're sizing these systems well all of the the primary manufacturers kind of give suggestions on you have a pond this size and this depth and this is how many diffusers you need and this is the size of pump that we would use for those diffusers you can use those rough numbers to help guide you in getting something set up if you want to go DIY and you don't want help that's fine but at least make sure they're at least somewhat appropriately sized for the best results and the most efficiency the final thing that I want to mention is T connections. You'll see in DIY setups, folks will have multiple diffusers. They'll have a single line coming off a pump and they'll put that on a T or put a T on that line and then they'll run two diffusers off of that. Now if these diffusers are fairly close together, if they're not very far apart, you could get away with that. But I see no real benefit to putting two diffusers that close together. The purpose of using multiple, multiple diffusers is really to spread them out uh, generally quite a ways to provide aeration to multiple points in the pond and turn that water over especially in shallow water you got to spread them out but the T doesn't allow you what I would call granular control of the airflow the airflow will go to the point of least resistance meaning if one of those diffusers is shallow than more shallow than another one it's going to get most of the air and that does not achieve the purpose that you want so typically we will put a valved manifold on the pump and if we have two diffusers it will have two outport valves each line has a dedicated valve on it so we control airflow to each diffuser very very precisely and these things you can get them for under 100 bucks and they give you full control of airflow and so there's no reason to mess with the T in some of these DIY setups they just don't work very well if you're actually using multi multiple diffusers the way you should so at any rate <clears throat> that's what i have uh, i think this information will be of help to many people if you have questions you can leave them below if you want to comment or discuss some of these topics leave the information below we'll uh we'll share some dialogue there you can also get in touch with me directly at americanaeration.com if you need anything relating to pond aeration i'm happy to help and i hope you have a great day wherever you are